Hi, and welcome along to the first in our series of container security fundamentals videos. What we're going to be doing in this series of videos is we're going to be exploring containers, how they work, and how they use Linux features to provide their isolation. Understanding this hopefully will give you a good idea of how you can help improve the security of your containers. In this first video, what we want to talk about is the idea that containers are just processes. Whenever you start a Docker container, what you will find is you are actually just starting a Linux process. And then the container runtime, Docker, or Podman, or any of the other ones available, will make use of existing Linux features to provide isolation. There's quite a number of different features in use, and we'll be going into a lot more detail on these in later videos. But for now, what we want to focus on is this idea that containers are just processes. So to demonstrate that, what we'll do is we'll actually show you how you can interact with a container just using standard Linux process tools. So here I've got a machine, which is a, just a standard Linux host running Docker. If I run the command ps minus fc nginx, which just looks through the process list of this host for any instances of the nginx, so web server, at the moment we'll come back with nothing, right? There are no nginx web servers running on this machine. Now, if I do a Docker run and I create a new container, We'll call it web server, running on the Nginx container image. At this point, I've now started my container and it's running on the machine. But what I said earlier on was that containers are just Linux processes. So let's try reissuing our ps command and see if it, what it thinks at the host level. You can see that what we've actually done is as far as the Linux host is concerned, we have just started an instance of the Nginx web server. We've got a set of processes, which is exactly what you'd expect if you'd run Nginx on this machine. Now we're gonna take note of this number here, 46727, which is the process ID of our Nginx web server. Because what we can do is we can actually see if we can interact with our container just using standard Linux tools. So to do that, what I'm going to do initially is I'm going to do docker exec, and I'm gonna execute a command inside our web server container. And I'm going to issue the command touch my new bar. This creates a new file inside our container. And now what I'm going to see if I can do is can I get access to that file using standard Linux tools? So to do that, I'm going to use sudo ls and I'm going to look inside the proc file system. Now the proc file system in Linux you may not have come across before, essentially contains all the information about every running process on the machine, amongst other things. So because containers are just processes, what we can do is we can use this to actually get inside and actually have a look at what was happening inside our container. So we've got our process ID from before, and then we're going to say, give us the root. This gives you the root file system of any process on the machine, in this case, our container. And what you can see is, there we go, that is the root file system of the Nginx container image along with the file that we created earlier. So this shows us that containers really are just processes and in a lot of ways you can interact with them as though they were any other Linux process on the machine. So what we're going to do in later videos is going to delve a lot more into how is it that containers appear to be isolated but in reality they are just other Linux processes and how you can interact with them more. 